My name is Matt Davison, and I'm a professor um, of quantitative finance at Western University. I work partly in the stats department and partly in the Ivy Business School. Uh, I do research in quantitative finance, quantitative portfolio optimization, options pricing, risk management. I also train uh, doctoral and master's students in those areas, as well as teaching plenty of, of courses both at the MBA the masters and the undergraduate level. Uh, before becoming an academic, I worked uh, at Deutsche Bank, uh, where I was um, a front office quant in a, in a large uh, equity arbitrage fund. And um, I also continue to consult in the financial industry. I've, I've known Jin, for a number, Jin Choi for a number of years. Uh, he was actually my PhD student uh, here at Western. He did a. He studied for his PhD degree under my supervision. Uh, he wrote a really nice thesis on on actually modeling real estate prices and looking at the relationship uh, between real estate prices and uh, and solar power uh, companies, which obviously need to um, buy real estate to put their solar panels on. That was one of his projects. He also looked at how to how companies that make subdivisions. Um, develop how they take different decisions for developing uh, that type of land. Um, so, and I've stayed in touch with Jin. Jin finished his his studies a number of years ago, but I've kept touch with them ever since. Uh, and uh, I'm really excited about his his new company. So I, I've been a member of Money Geek um, more or less since it opened, uh, and I really like the the website. I really like the services that that it, it provides. Um, the the first thing I really like about it is is the idea of of making a financial plan that incorporates the the truth that that markets do fluctuate. So an awful lot of financial planning process, an awful lot of the financial planning process that, for instance, um, a mutual fund salesperson or an Edward Jones type person will take you through, is very if, if I would say deterministic in its nature, it'll make some kind of assumption about the return that a stock will give you, that a bond will give you, and, and just sort of say that that's the return that, that the stock market's going to give you over the next 30 years. And it's true that might be the average return over the next 30 years, but we all know that the market goes up and down, and that it's certainly not going to be exactly that return for each of those next 30 years. So your portfolio will go up and it'll go down, and depending when it goes up and down, it's going to be different. I mean, it, the best thing for you to happen is that the, the big down year in the market is your very first year when you don't have any money yet, not your very last year when you've got an awful lot of money invested. Um, so you have this variability in your, in your life and in your investment life as well. Money Geek's tools really show that and, and give you a very uh, visual look and feel for, for how, if you like robust, how how tough your plan is to changes in, in, in market returns over time. So, uh, and I've never seen anything, I've never seen anything like that in any other financial planning, uh, in any other financial planning tool. So I'm, I'm really excited about that, just for openers. So once you've, once you've made your financial plan though, uh, what Money Geek does is it, is it allows you to look at some different off the shelf Portfolios that that the team there has has constructed, uh, and those portfolios are built on the platform of exchange traded funds, uh, and that's very interesting because the the real enemy to long term investing is transaction fees um, and and management fees. Uh, it's very difficult to beat the markets, and to beat the markets after paying a one or two percent management fee or management expense ratio is probably almost impossible. I mean, there might be the odd fund that does it, but to pick that fund in advance and to have it do it over many years is next to impossible. Exchange traded funds have very low uh, expenses, and so you're just trying to beat the market. You're not trying to beat the, uh, the manager as well. Uh, so I, I really like the different uh, portfolios that Money Geek has put together that fill different uh, relationships between risk and return. I 
think they've, they've been put together in a very solid way and their behavior is already bearing out their, that how well designed they are. Well, I, I mentioned uh, earlier the more realistic um, recognition that, that markets go up and down and that it's not just the average return on a stock that matters, it's the distribution of those returns. Uh, the variability year over year in the returns of a stock, and that Money Geek has tools for, for for looking at that. So that that's a difference in in that's a very particular tool Money Geek has that I haven't seen anywhere else. But I think taking a few steps back, the whole philosophy of Money Geek is actually quite different from that of a traditional financial advisor. Um, in that. Uh, Money Geek isn't actually managing your money per se. You're not writing a big check to Money Geek every month and they're holding on to your, uh, your money and, and hopefully making it grow for you. That's how a typical financial advisor works. And uh, there's good and bad things to that. I mean, the, the good part about that is the financial advisor takes care of all the, the details of investing. The bad part of it, though, is it makes... It, it, can misalign the incentives between the advisor and the client. The advisor might be compensated for putting you into different um, products from time to time, um, and that it might not be in your best interests, uh, but it's in the advisor's best interest. Um, it's true you both have a have, have the interest of growing your money, um, but it's, there's something very clean about Money Geek's approach, where they give you the advice and you do it yourself. By doing it yourself, you also learn how it works, um, and I think you become a more knowledgeable investor over time rather than just letting someone else take care of what, after all, is a very important set of decisions in, in your life. I, I think so. I mean, the, the, uh, the directions, the, the proportions that you need to invest are well defined. You just need to put it together. Um, you know, people do a lot of things in their day-to-day -day life that require some skill. Um, cooking is, for instance, uh, difficult. You need to measure the ingredients and you need to put them together and you actually even need to have some physical skills to be a good cook. You need to know, uh, you know when to turn things. You need to be able to um, understand the, the physical properties of your oven, your barbecue, what have you. Uh, I don't think that it's any harder to follow Money Geek's instructions than it is to bake a batch of chocolate chip cookies. Um, now, do you want it to be easier to invest your life savings than to, than to bake a batch of chocolate chip cookies? I, I, I think that's a little bit delusional. I mean, I, I think that we, we all put a lot of effort into many things in our personal life. I mean, people may put a lot of effort into, into finding the best exercise program that works for them and following it. This is actually much easier than that because you don't actually have to go do the runs or do, lift the weights. You just need to figure out what the right program is and every so often monitor how it's been going and uh, uh, make the relevant changes. So. Um, the other thing people worry about is that they're going to make a big mistake and it's going to uh, cost them a lot of money. And this is one of the places where if you start investing young, it's actually very forgiving. Because let, let's suppose that in the first year you're investing, you invest $1,000. Now it may have been quite hard for you to save $1,000. Um, and you invest $1,000 and you do really badly and you lose 300 of those $1,000. So you have a 30% loss. Well, that's gonna be disappointing, but at the end of the day, it's only $300. Uh, someone who's been investing for many years and now has a million dollars, their portfolio will, will go up and down $300 every day and they won't even realize it. Uh, so. The nice thing about investing if you start young is you make your mistakes when there's not much at stake. Um, if you let someone else take care of everything for you, and then you start investing on your own when you're in your 50s, uh, then you're going to make your mistakes when you have a lot more money 
a lot more skin in the game and your mistakes are going to be costly and painful. So uh, I guess that's how I'd respond to, to those concerns.